Topics of importance to research for the future. Uh, clinical trials using extracts. Clinical trials. Because um, most clinical trials to date have been using synthetic forms of cannabis. And a very different effect. And particularly I would like to see a focus on ep epilepsy, but that's, again, my opinion. Why is that compounds works uh, synergetically in cannabis plant? Is this a challenge for a scientist to find out? We have been trained all of our lives that medicine is a single magic bullet compound that will go in and treat a symptom. That's pharmaceutical industry's approach to medicine. Cannabis is a very unique type of medicine. It's it's like a herbal medicine, it's like a pharmaceutical medicine, but it's kind of in a unit by itself because of the entourage effect. Cannabis has a huge range of efficacy, meaning um, it has a desired effect. And it's, once again, the, the mobile is treating a system, not one symptom. And pharmaceutical drugs are used to go in kick out a symptom, for example, take a headache out, but the cannabis will treat the whole system and, and, and adjust it so that you lose the headache. It's not kicking out the symptom, it's treating the system. That's why cannabis is a unique type of medicine. I believe the pharmaceutical industry will try to learn from it, but it's not their way. Their way is to synthesize compounds from nature so they can own it and call it their own, and then put it into a biological system. Synthetics, in my mind, don't belong in a biological system. They're the wrong energy, the wrong resonance, if you like. Even if we combine isolated uh, compounds, do we get the entourage effect? It'll be your best shot, but it won't be the same as a natural product. Like I say, uh, a product made in a test tube, you line up all the atoms in the same arrangement in space, but they have subatomic energies which will provide a resonance to that molecule, it'll resonate and it'll be recognized by a protein, which is a receptor, it'll, it'll recognize that resonance. And the spin of a synthetic molecule will be different spin to a, an actual molecule, and it'll have a different binding capacity to the receptor. How do we know if we are endocannabinoid deficient? Virtually every day I will take phosphonyl serine and phosphonyl choline as to oil supplements, which are nerve cell fats that are part of nerve cell membranes. I just take those as a daily supplement because I look at most of the fat that I take as being plastic saturated fat. And I want good fats in my brain. What I'm talking about is the precursors to endocannabinoids, which are quality, quality fats. The hemp oils are direct precursors to cannabinoids. Um, there's a company, I believe it's still in existence, called Vitex, which was headed by Raphael Mershul. Um, and I believe that Dr. Lou Rahanish was part of that as well. And it was a company, its, it's concept was to rejuvenate and rebuild the endocannabinoid system to find out what's needed for uh, a well-tuned-up endocannabinoid system. And I've lost track of that research because I've been on another mm -hmm. avenue, but um, I believe one day we will understand how important the endocannabinoid system is. It was really one of the biggest medical finds of the last century, right next to insulin and DNA. This structure of DNA is a major medical find because it has so much to do with human physiology and psychology. Um, and once again, the enormous range of efficacy by 
tuning up systems within human physiology, any animal physiology, is a tuning device. The mm. cannabinoids will tune you up. That's why you tend to have a better quality of life if you eat a little cannabis every day. Mm. It's good for you.